Hi, this is The Wind in the Willows, Chapter One, The Riverbank, Part One. The mole had been working very hard all morning, spring cleaning his little home, first with brooms, then with dusters, then on ladders and steps and chairs with a brush and a pail of whitewash. He did this until he had dust in his throat and eyes and splashes of whitewash all over his black fur. Spring was moving in the air above and, <clears throat> and the earth below and around him and his dark and lowly little house. Any wonder, he suddenly flung down his brush on the floor and said, bother and oh blow and also hang spring cleaning and bolted out of the house without even waiting to put on his coat. Mole immediately made for the steep little tunnel, and without a moment's hesitation, he began scraping, scratching, and scrabbling. He worked busily with his paws and muttered to himself, Up we go! Up we go! Till at last, pop! His snout came out into the sunlight, and he found himself rolling in the warm grass of a great meadow. Bother, oh blow, and hang are examples of British sayings that show someone doesn't like something. Do you have any examples of American sayings that show the same thing? This is fine, he said to himself. This is better than whitewashing, he added as he jumped with the delight at the joy of spring. In this state of happiness, he made his way across the meadow till, the, till he reached the hedge on the farther side. It all seemed too good to be true. As moving hither and thither, he observed everywhere birds building and leaves and flowers bursting forth. He thought his happiness was complete when, as he meandered aimlessly along, he came to the edge of a full-fed river. There he stood quite mesmerized, as never before had he seen a river. He watched in awe as it shimmered and shined, gurgled and burbled, swirled and curled its way seaward. So bewitched and fascinated was he that he trotted for a while by the side of it. Eventually, exhausted by his tremendous effort, he sat down on the bank to rest. As he sat on the grass and gazed across the river, a dark hole in the bank opposite, just above the water's edge, caught his eye. Mole quietly contemplated what a nice, snug dwelling place it would make. As he gazed, something bright and small seemed to twinkle like a tiny star down in the heart of it. But it could hardly be a star, and it was too glittering and small for a glowworm. Then, as he looked, it winked at him and so revealed itself to be an eye and a small face began to gradually grow up around it like a frame around a picture. Now a glow worm, boys and girls, is a small insect and it has on its tail a little, um, a, a, a little part of its body that can give off bright light. he saw a brown little face with whiskers. A grave round face with the same twinkle in its eye. Small, neat ears and thick, silky hair. It was the water rat. The two animals stood and regarded each other cautiously. Hello, mole? Said the water rat. Hello, rat, said the mole. Would you like to come over? inquired the rat. Oh, it's all very well to ask, said the mole rather grumpily, he being new to a river and riverside life and its ways. The rat said nothing but stooped and unfastened a rope and hauled on it, then lightly stepped into a little boat, which the mole had not observed. It was painted blue outside and white within, and was just the size for two animals, and the mole loved it immediately. The rat sculled across. Then he held up his forepaw as the mole stepped gingerly down. Lean on that, he said. 
Now then, step lively, and the mole, to his great delight, found himself actually seated in the stern of a real boat. Hmm. When it said, the rat sculled across the river, what do you think the word sculled means there? This has been a wonderful day, he said, as the rat shoved off and took the skulls again. Do you know... I've never been in a boat before in all my life. What? cried the rat, open mouth. Never been in a... You never... Well, I... What have you been doing then? Is it so nice as all that? asked the mole shyly, though he was quite prepared to believe it as he leaned back in his seat and surveyed the cushions the oars, and all the fascinating fittings. <laughs> nice! It's the only thing, said the water rat solemnly, as he leaned forward for his stroke. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. Simply messing, he went on dreamily. Messing about in boats. Messing... Look ahead, rat, cried the mole suddenly. It was too late. The boat struck the bank full tilt. The oarsman lay on his back at the bottom of the boat, his heels in the air. Well, which character do you think the oarsman is? An oarsman is the person who's holding and pulling through the water with the oars. Was that mole or was it water rat? <laughs> messing about in boats <laughs> or with boats the rat went on cheerily picking himself up in a pleasant laugh in or out of them it doesn't matter look here if you've really nothing else to do what do you say we spend time on the river together the mole waggled his toes from sheer happiness spread his chest with a sigh of contentment and leaned back blissfully in the, into the soft cushions. What a day I'm having, he said. Let's start at once. Hold on a minute then, said the rat as he tied fast the boat and climbed up into his hole above. Moments later, he reappeared, staggering under a fat wicker picnic basket. Shove that under your feet he said to Mole as he passed it down into the boat, and then he untied the boat and took the skulls again. What's inside that? asked Mole eagerly. <laughs> There's cold chicken inside it, replied Rat. Cold tongue, cold ham, cold beef, pickled gherkins, salad, French rolls, raw watercress sandwiches, potted meat, ginger beer, lemonade, soda water. Oh, stop, stop, cried the Mole. That is too much. Do you really think so? inquired the rat seriously. It's only what I always take on these little excursions. The other manim animals complain that I hardly ever bring enough. The mole did not hear a word he said. He was already absorbed in the new life he was entering upon. He trailed upon the water and dreamed long waking dreams. The water rat like good little fellow he was, sculled steadily on and did not disturb him. I like your clothes, old chap, the rat remarked after some half an hour or so had passed. I'm going to get a velvet jacket myself someday. Oh, boys and girls, old chap is a British saying for man or boy. I beg your pardon, said the mole, pulling himself together with an effort. You must think me very rude, but all this is so new to me. So this is what you call a river? The river, corrected the rat. And you really live by the river? What a jolly life. By it, and with it, and on it, and in it, said the rat. It's brother and sister to me, and ants, and company, and food and drink, and naturally washing. It's my world, and I don't want any other. But isn't it a bit dull at times, the mole asked, just you and the river and no one else to pass a word with? No one else to... <laughs> huh. 
Well, I mustn't be hard on you, said the rat. You're new to this. The bank is so crowded nowadays that many people are moving away altogether. Oh, no, it isn't what it used to be at all. Otters, kingfishers, dab chicks, moorhens, all of them about all day long and always wanting you to do something as if a fellow had no business of his own to attend to. Boys and girls, these are some of the animals that um, used to live by the riverbank. We have here an otter in the big picture, and then the animals called kingfishers, dab chicks, and moorhens are in the smaller pictures to the right. What lies over there? asked the mole, waving a paw towards a backwater of woodland that darkly framed the water meadows on, uh, on one side of the river. Well, replied Rat hesitantly, that is the wild wood. We don't go there too often. Are there scary creatures there? Mole asked, trying not to tremble. Oh, the squirrels are all right. Rat replied, and the rabbits, some of them, but rabbits can be a mixed lot. And then there's Badger, of course. He lives right in the heart of it. Wouldn't live anywhere else either. Dear old Badger, nobody interferes with him. So, boys and girls, we're about to hear about some other animals that live in the river, uh, in the wild wood. These animals are called weasels, stoats, which look a lot like weasels, and foxes. Why, who should interfere with him? asked the mole. Well, of course, there are others, explained the rat in a hesitating sort of way. Weasels, stoats, foxes, and so on. They're all right in a way. I'm very good friends with them past the time of day when we meet, but you can't trust them, and that's a fact. And beyond the wild woods? Mole asked. Beyond the woods is the wide world, said the rat, and that's something that doesn't matter either to you or me. I've never been there, and I'm never going, nor you either, if you've got any sense. Don't ever refer to it again, please. Now then, here's our backwater at last, where we're going to have lunch. And boys and girls, that's the end of our reading for today.